Well, uh, the borders, they tell me, are closed between Victoria and WA. How do I know that? And how do I get past it? Well, we use Zoom. So via Zoom, we're heading to Perth to catch up with Carolee Katsambanis. Carolee, can I just say what a pleasure it is to have you on board. More importantly, how cute those headphones are. <laughs> George, it is wonderful to connect with you again and to connect with everyone on the Informer. Yes, look, the headphones, as we all know, kids, they took my other headphones, the wireless ones, so I've had to scrabble around and find these. But as we know, it's what gets to air, not what doesn't get to air that's important. Uh, absolutely right. It's what you don't see. But they are that's so right. cute. They really are lovely. Now, <laughs> Carolee, uh, what we need to tell people is that you're going to be a regular contributor on the Informer. Give us... Yeah, I'm... You're going to be our insider uh, on all things WA. Uh, has Mark McGowan given you a clearance to be able to speak to everybody else on the Eastern Seaboard? <laughs> no, I definitely am not on Mark McGowan's um, Christmas card list. Look, I'm really thrilled because Western Australia, we all know I'm originally from Western Australia. I spent about 12 years in the Eastern States, in Melbourne and also Sydney and the rest of New South Wales. But everyone always forgets, once you leave WA and you land in the east, we are more than half the country, but we are three or four hours away with the plane ride with three hours time difference in the summer. And we know that we just don't exist. Rightly or wrongly, Perthians are incredibly parochial. They won't hear a bad word about their state, but it's actually to our detriment because those of us that have gone over east in various careers that have been chosen to move back home for family or other work opportunities. We have a different perspective. Mm. And I think it's a very good perspective because it's actually not healthy to have a solely parochial West Australian view on the view of the whole of the nation. Uh, when are you going to tell the Premier this? Where, so am I going to tell the Premier this? Well, look, there's an argument this morning, isn't there, about, look, we, we have been badly treated by the GST redistribution, but I have to say that... <laughs> but I have to say that, um, sadly, as you would know, we've had Fortress WA for nearly seven months, and we've been told by our Labor Premier that there's been no community transmission of COVID-19 in our state. What happened was... Friday midnight, the borders went up. It went up from a hard border to a controlled border. Less than 36 hours later, there were a few cases in South Australia and our Premier just completely put the border up. That was the end of it. Now, what is interesting for you and for all the viewers around is that this locking up Western Australia so that effectively we're an island within an island is actually popular with a lot of people in Western Australia especially the older generation. Mm. They have been convinced that even though they lived through the world wars, that seriously, they're going to get COVID and they're going to die. And it's just indicative of a wider strategy that if you put the fear of God into somebody with health, they will do anything a government says. Now, I've been quite open on various radio shows and I've said that my take on our border going up again, stopping South Australians coming in, shows that our supposed contact tracing, which we've been told the government's been working on for seven months, evidently doesn't work. And evidently the government doesn't have confidence in its own contact tracing. Because I've also said that Mark McGowan, whether you're Labor, Liberal, Greens or whatever, all the premiers have done what you would expect any leader to do in a crisis. However, it's very easy to govern when you lock up a state. Um, our Premier is well known for having a real whack at New South Wales, at Gladys Berejiklian. He keeps talking about the Ruby Princess and he keeps saying, I don't understand it. I don't understand Scott Morrison. I don't understand why people don't see Western Australia as the gold standard. And a lot of people believe that. Mm. And I say on radio shows, the reason why New South Wales is the gold standard is they had the Ruby Princess disaster. They learnt from it. They've got immaculate contact tracing, you know, facilities and abilities and strategies. So if there's an outbreak, they shut down that little bit, but their economy and their state keeps working. And I try and use the analogy and I say, I could so solve the road toll tomorrow for Western Australia. 
let's ban the car. No cars on the road, no, no fatalities. But this complete locking up the border and Mark McGowan a couple of weeks ago was, his language was very, very indicative that we were almost to expect the hard border to come up again. And he said, I will have no hesitation in putting the border up. Now, what a lot of people forget is that this is no way for small business to live and it's no way for Australians to live. Um, you know, people coming from New South Wales and also from Victoria, when they come to WA now, they have to go into quarantine for 14 days. But what people aren't realising is that what we're suffering here in Western Australia is actually a lot of mental health and a lot of mental cruelty issues. There are currently people where this is their home state for no fault of their own, they might have been stranded in the east, even though we now supposedly have a controlled border, they're still not being allowed back into Western Australia. There are people that have tried 10, 11, 12 times. They fill out what is called a G2G pass, which is good to go. However, if they're knocked back, there is no independent organisation they can go to to get that decision appealed. It, it is literally what the West Australian police feel like doing on the day. We've had cases where people have got to the border and they've been turned back and they've had to go 300 kilometres back. However, in the Perth metropolitan area, because it's almost out of sight, out of mind, a lot of people think, my goodness, we're being kept safe. And they don't realise that this is a real control technique by a Labor Premier who doesn't want to relinquish control. And a lot of West Australians don't realise that they are really being controlled by this. And in national newspapers, you know, they're saying Western Australia is frustrating the economic recovery of Australia. I have to agree. I mean, our message has gone out to the Eastern states. You're not wanted. We mm. don't want your tourism. Mm. And traditionally, I don't know whether our viewers know or not, but Western Australians do not holiday in their own backyard. They tend to go to Melbourne, to Sydney, to Queensland, to Tasmania, and of course, up to Bali and in Indonesia. That's like the backyard of Western Australia. But of course, because they haven't been able to do that, people are saying, oh, look, we can holiday at home. But the message that's gone out to the Eastern states is appalling. We've got tourism operators that have just gone bust because they can't run their business. You can't just open a business with 24 hours notice, I want there's you, no start. I want you to hold that thought because sure. we're gonna do this again next week. What I want you to Good. tell everybody is this, you've got an election coming in March in WA. We Mark, have. Mark McGowan has just watched Anastasia Palaszczuk play the very same card and she got in and she's smiling from ear to ear. Um, let's catch up again. You've given us a fantastic first episode. Carolee Katsumbanis is our guest, our correspondent, our regular, our insider. And uh, let me tell you, between you and I, we are going to make sure we're not on the Christmas card list of the WA Premier. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I promise next week for you and all the viewers, I will have the appropriate headphones and not my 12-year-old. Carolee, thank you for joining us. Thank you.